Hey natural historians, YouTubers, Instagrammers, birders, plant nerds, corporate executives, whoever you are, uh, welcome to this week's episode of Notes from the Field. I'm James, I'm the collections manager at the Natural History Institute. Uh, first off, where am I? I'm on the west slope of the Sierra Prieta, in a ponderosa pine, madrain oak woodland, and we are looking out uh, west here. So, paying attention. You know, there's, there's a lot that goes into natural history and what a natural history practice might look like. In my opinion, um, paying attention is cornerstone. More, I wanted to gear this convo towards a, um, a new modality, uh, new to me. Uh, yeah, it's a modality of paying attention. And it's one that you might want to consider in your natural history practice. And you might have heard about it, but it's an app that we can get on our phones on our iPads, tablets, uh, it's got an internet browser, and it's called iNaturalist. And let's go see what that's about. All right, people, so I'm out here walking around trying to think, what am I gonna show you? And I stumble upon two of my favorite plants in the whole freaking area. So first, we got Arctostathalus pringlii, Pringle leaf manzanita, I really like this plant. As far as the genus Arctostaphylus goes, or Manzanitas, um, this one's got a really wild growth form. These are all pretty small. They can get incredibly arborescent and big. And I really like the, the blue-green hue of the leaves. I think it's a really attractive plant. I want to share this with people, and um, I'm going to do that with iNaturalist. So first, what what is iNaturalist? It, it's really a social... A uh, network for biologists, citizen scientists, um, naturalists, researchers, um, and if any of those titles sound exclusive, guess what? It's for the general public too. Um, creates an avenue for really anybody who's interested in um, sharing their observations and kind of tapping into a source of help to help them ID their observations. Uh, and furthermore, our naturalist. Um, the way it works, which I'll get into in a second, um, ultimately builds an incredible data set of um, biological observations across the globe where anyone, you or I, can go out, take a photo, and upload it. And when it's uploaded, it's uploaded with a geo-reference, it's uploaded with some sort of ID, and the upload is um, open to comment from anybody on the iNaturalist network to either critique or confirm the ID. Um, and yeah, if, if, I, if you're not hip on iNaturalist, like I wasn't until recently, um, now that I've gotten it and have looked more closely at it, it is incredible. I am floored by how many people use this application and how massive of a data set it is. And yeah, so before I get too into it, um, let me just show you real quick how it works. Um, it's incredibly uh, easy to use, so I won't go too far into it. But I'll just I'll make an observation here real quick and just show you what that's about. So check it out. So on my home screen, I'm just gonna pop this open, and this is. Probably, this is an iPhone I'm using. I imagine it's similar for other phones, tablets. So this is what I'm greeted with when I open it up. Okay, at the bottom of the screen, you'll notice five tabs. And I wanna focus right now on the Me tab. So real quick, this is where all of my, or the Natural History Institute's observations live. We have 52 observations. Uh, I just made an observation of the Yerba Santa, and this is just where they live. This is just where I can go back and keep track of what I've seen out here. So that's that, and all, all the info lives, if I were to click on one, you can see the other info I recorded. But let's go into an observation. So you'll click that bottom center of the screen, and you'll pick camera. This is your classic camera interface, and I wanna record an observation of this beauty. So, I'm gonna snap a photo. When you're taking photos, you're trying to 
really paint the picture of what makes this species what it is. So I just took a pretty macro scale photo showing the gestalt of the plant. And I'm gonna add a couple more. So we got some fruits in here and leaves all in one shot. And this is a good shot because you can really see those hairs on the, the stem and on the petiole of the leaf. And even on the leaves, that's characteristic of this species compared to Arctostaphylus pungens. So that's a good pick. I got some fruits, the leaves, those hairs, the stems, into that. Then let's do one last photo of the bark. Nice. All right, so I got those photos in. You can choose which photo you want your default to be. I'm gonna keep that as is. Then you see, what did you see? So you click that, and iNaturalist will actually use the photos that you just put in there and suggest some um, IDs. So right off the bat, iNat is pretty sure that it is in the genus Arctostaphylus. I agree. Um, and then we got some top 10 species suggestions. So first off is Arctostaphylus pungens. That's incredibly common in our area. However, I know that this is not that. Um, and then the second one is, boom, Arctostaphylus springlii. That's what this is. Um, so I'm going to select that. I happen to know what that, I happen to know that that is the ID. Um, so I feel confident with that. However, if you're not confident, um, you could just pick the genus if you do feel confident about that. Like, okay, this is a manzanita, it's Arctostaphylus. Um, and pick that just to play it on the safe side with less detail. Um, but also know that once this is all complete, people have the opportunity to critique or confirm your ID. More on that in a second. So I just do a quick little note, growing on south facing slope with a lot of oaks here. Quercus species and Aereo Dion and Gustafolium. Cool. Okay, so that's good. It automatically logs our date and time, our geo reference. Bing, right there. No problem with that. That's where I'm at. And that's key to what makes this a great data set is these geo, are these geo references. So then I'm gonna hit share. Thinking. All right, so once the sync is complete, it's now been added to my list of observations. I got 53 observations now for the NHI, which is awesome. And this is where it lives, so I can always go back I can revisit my photos, my notes, the location, etc. So then the next great feature of iNaturalist is this comment section. So here you can see that, so you have my ID at the top, all my info that I posted into iNaturalist, and then you can see where Natural History Institute ID'd this observation as Arctostaphylus pringlii. It's important to note that the ID and the observation itself sort of exists separately um, until, an until an ID is finalized. So right now, this screen that you can see right now, um, anybody can see. So right now, I just sent this off to the world. Everybody can see on iNaturalist that I just found this plant here in the Sierra Prieta at this day and time. And I think that it's Arctostaphylus pringlii. So other folks can see this. Um, Let's see. Huh. Yeah, so other folks are able to see this and people are able to look at my photos and tell me whether or not they agree um, that this is 
Arctostaphylus bringlii. And once we get more comments, um, once we get confirmation or critiques, I mean, anyway, it just takes all that for this observation to um, become finalized and like go in the books as Arctostaphylus bringlii. So another really cool feature about a naturalist is this map. So, so I'm this blue dot on the map and I'm gonna zoom in to my general area. Let's give it a second. It should load a bunch of observations, holy cow. So everything you see here are observations that someone else in the iNaturalist community made. So the green marker on the blue dot where I am, that's the one observation that I just made. Well, actually I've made two here. So look, okay, that's the one I made before this video. And so everyone can see this. Zoom out, so those are both mine. Let's go over here, see what happens. Okay, we got a whole bunch. So green indicates flora, blue, birds. Someone saw a red cross bill in the aspens on Copper Basin Road. Yeah, so anyway, you can see, you know, this is just like, my screen's only showing a few square miles and it's just covered in observations uh, of all walks of life and some that don't walk, but yeah. So this map really shows you how massive of a data set this is. All right, people, it's golden hour. That means I gotta make my way out of here soon. I uh, wanna make one final plug, uh, kind of a bonus here. If you live in the Mogollon Highlands ecoregion, uh, first, if you're not familiar with what the Mogollon Highlands are, uh, head on over to the Institute's website and check out the Mogollon Highlands Initiative. Uh, long story short, it's an ecoregion here in central Arizona and New Mexico that we're studying. Um, and you can contribute to the Milgan Highlands project in iNaturalist. And the goal of that is to help us build a data set to help us better understand the biodiversity that lives here in the Milgan Highlands. So, um, yeah, today I just kind of showed you all um, what iNaturalist is and hopes that you'll consider uh, using it as a mode of um, paying attention um, as something that might contribute to your natural history practice. Um, whether you're excited to use it to share your observations with your friends, with the world, um, perhaps you're excited to use it as a way of learning. Uh, it's a great way to um, get feedback uh, get opinions on what you're seeing out there and also you can follow what other people are seeing and learn that way um, and also you're contributing to a data set that is 100% usable by the scientific community um, it can really help uh, science keep tabs on like the distribution of species and where they're at um, yeah so whatever it may be um, Perhaps a naturalist is for you. And this is not oh yeah, and again, as, as Bob always says, if you're enjoying this content, if you're enjoying what we're doing, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really lets us know um, that people are following this. And also, if you're into the work the Institute's doing, please consider making a donation. Thanks.